The human body is an amazing biological machine. Composed of a myriad of complex components, medical science is just now beginning to understand. New technologies provide incredible images and new insights into how everything works. And in many ways, at the heart of it all is, well, the heart. But heart disease is the number one cause of death worldwide, killing more than 8 million people each year. Cardiac infarction, more commonly known as a heart attack, can happen without warning, killing heart muscle cells immediately. Even if the patient recovers, the damage to their heart may not. And so they want to somehow improve the function of that, of that heart tissue. So all around the world, researchers are determined to learn how to fix a broken heart, exploring multiple paths of inquiry to innovate new bioengineering methods, even developing the technology to print a new heart. Dr. Warren Grayson is a professor of biomedical engineering at Johns Hopkins University. His own work focuses on utilizing 3D printing techniques to aid facial bone regeneration. He also studies pioneering new research in regenerative medicine from around the world. Could you build something that's biological replacement that could either augment the normal function of the heart? And in the most extreme conditions, I think the dream is could you actually build a new heart, a new biological heart, to, to replace that organ? This is a reconstruction of our circulatory system based on actual medical data. Blood vessels extend a total length of about 100,000 kilometers, or about two and a half times around the globe. They deliver oxygen and nutrients to every corner and take waste products away. They also serve as an organ-to-organ -organ communication system, transporting messaging molecules vital to our health and well-being, including instructions directing repair and regeneration. The heart is the engine of this circulatory network, pumping blood throughout our bodies. So any disruption can have dire consequences. But the heart is difficult to treat due to a rather unique and troublesome characteristic. Many organs continue working as old cells are replaced by new ones. However, that process occurs very slowly in the heart. It's believed that only 30% of its cells are replaced over 50 years. So once the heart is damaged, it takes a long time for recovery to take place. How can new heart cells be generated? It appears tiny extracellular bubbles called exosomes, some hidden within the heart, play a key role. They contain a message that can rebuild the heart. Let's make more and more cells. So if a damaged heart receives an infusion of artificially created messaging molecules, this could speed up the process. Renowned researcher, Dr. Eduardo Marban, tested this theory by giving with mice that had experienced cardiac infarction. The results were dramatic. This is the wall of the heart after cardiac infarction. The cells on the right side have died, and the wall has become thin. But in mice that received these additional messaging molecules, the number of cells had increased, and the wall had become thicker. Exosomes and their biology have sparked a revolution in our understanding of how things work inside our bodies. If we can take the right ones from a defined therapeutic source, they might be very powerful agents in the treatment of disease in a way that defies all the conventions. 
while Marban and his team continue their work to address cardiac disease. Elsewhere, researchers investigate other approaches, including the development of lab-cultured tissues and organs. This is Kenneth Chen, a world-leading expert in the field of regenerative medicine. At Chen's lab, he uses embryonic stem cells to observe the formation of one organ almost every day. Here, the researcher adds a certain signaling molecule to an ES cell. It's called WNT. WNT molecules are present in large quantities in dividing eggs. After one week, part of the cell is starting to pulse. Two days later, large ripples move across the flattened cell. This is the very beginning of a human heart. You can take an embryonic stem cell that can become any cell and then instruct it to specifically, almost entirely become human beating ventricular muscle. Uh, this is an exciting event. Building on this excitement and enabling growth in biomedical research is the development of a new type of material with which to work. Essentially reprogramming common human cells, such as skin cells, scientists can now create induced pluripotent stem cells, or IPS for short, with the same transformative properties of embryonic stem cells. Researchers in Israel are using IPS cells to develop startling new innovations, even printing a miniature heart. This is the first time that the whole cellular heart with blood vessel is uh, printed. How did they do it? Tal Devere and a team of research scientists at Tel Aviv University harvested patients' fatty tissue to produce a personalized biological hydrogel, as well as IPS cells manipulated to become cardiac and vascular cells. Together, these form what Devere calls bio-inks, we have bioinks for the heart and bioinks for the blood vessels. And then we use a 3D printer to print whole hearts with the, the major blood vessels. The next stage is uh, to mature these hearts in the lab for at least a month to help the cells or teach them how to uh, interact with each other and how to provide electrical signal and to have a synchronous contraction or pumping ability of the heart. And uh, in a year or two, we hope to uh, take these uh, hearts and transplant them in uh, small animal models in rats or uh, rabbits. Astounding, no doubt. And while much more work must be done to scale up the study, from printing rabbit-sized organs to a truly human-sized heart, its impact may be more immediate. By being able to create something like that inside a lab, you can start testing pharmacologic agents. It's definitely a positive. It definitely moves the field forward in terms of understanding basic biology, basic cell biology, and understanding cardiac biology. And yet, another element of Noor's study could result in medical applications more quickly. Using these same bioprinting techniques, the researchers developed a vascularized cardiac patch, leading to potentially new ways to repair the damage done by heart attacks. And so the idea there is that you, you can't remove that scar tissue entirely, but if you can implant a patch over it, so you think of it as you know, a cardiac band-aid in a sense that you place over there, then, and that has contractile ability, then it kind of augments that thinning wall. It makes it thicker and it also provides certain strength to that wall. So the cells combined with that matrix is all entirely biological, it's all entirely biocompatible. It can integrate with anybody. There's not going to be any immune rejection as a response to that because the cells come from that particular patient. 
I believe that in 10 years uh, there would be uh, printers in every hospital that will uh, print uh, uh, tissues and organs that will then be transplanted in patients. Dr. Grayson believes that's an optimistic timeline. But given the remarkable advances of biomedical engineering, doctors may soon truly learn how to fix a broken heart. Within science, there's always promise and there's always hope. And so each of these breakthroughs takes us, you know, that step further and maintains that hope in getting there.